and gentlemen, here we go. Three three-minute rounds of welterweight action on the way. It's time to meet the fighters. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man stands with an amateur record of two wins and one defeat. Representing 12-gauge MMA, it's Luke Beckley. And his opponent standing across the cage. Also with an amateur record of two wins and one defeat. Fighting out of the red corner. Representing MMA Academy Liverpool. It's Nicholas Santangeli. A welterweight contest. Nicholas Santangeli in the red corner fighting out of... MMA Academy Liverpool taking on Luke Begley from 12 gauge MMA on paper this couldn't get more even both of them two and one and Neil Hall starts this contest a terrific matchup this one Steve again Orthodox versus Southport both coming out with nice tight guards Santinelli uh, uh, a member of the armed forces uh, splits time training with there uh, alongside the MMA Academy and their prestigious team of, of coaches and competitors and, and Luke Begley been around a long time at, at 12 gauge MMA so a great little contest we've got here. Again, uh, on paper, couldn't be any more evenly matched, both with good camps behind them as well. And we start with both men trying to establish yeah, perhaps we, a little bit of dominance on the feet. Yeah, well, well the, the difficult part is when it becomes southpaw versus orthodox, is both sides are looking to lead that lead hand. So it becomes a little, a little fight within the fight. Uh, for, well, obviously, the left side from Sanson and the right side from, from Begley. You, you see a lot of amateur boxing fights, and it's all about controlling the lead foot, controlling the lead foot. Whereas MMA is a little good right oh. hand by Sanson. So, see where he did control the lead foot and deliver the right hand straight down yep. the pipe. So, gets his head off the line and throws that big, good, nice straight shot. And it's the, the lead foot just to the outside of your opponent's yeah. lead? Is that it's just the line of the shot. So, so, if I put my left outside your right, my right hand is in line with your chin. And obviously your left hand is nowhere near mine. He, he can't miss him with that right now. Reached again. See, he's like oh. Be Begley standing a little bit tall. Yeah. And, and and not so much head movement. So Santinelli's got finding a home for that right hand just by stepping left with it. And right. Leading with the jab, moving him onto it a little bit. As with a couple of the fights so far, it just seems that Nicholas it just seems to get a little a, a little more flowy at the moment. Just yeah. seems to have found his rhythm that little bit quicker. Looser. Yeah. More relaxed, perhaps. Yeah, sometimes it comes in the warm-up, sometimes it takes... Some fighters are just slow starters. Yeah. They, they need three minutes of getting punched in the face to wake up. But Santinelli, like you alluded to, is just coming like a firecracker, looking to impose his will on his opponent, and, and really enjoying it now, switching stance and, yeah, and pushing landed, Begley back. Landed a few there, starting to redden up the face of Luke Begley. But let's not count him out, Begley's still in this. Oh, yeah. So he maybe mix it up with a few level changes, looking to perhaps attach to, to Santinelli, so you know that if the fight's any different there. But good timing with a left kick counter. And again, with the outside right kick, so chipping away, perhaps gain, regained his composure after that initial uh, barrage of right hands. But Santinelli just chipping away at that lead leg. And, and controlling the center of the, uh, center of the cage as well. He, he's the one, he's pushing forward. Begley, for the most part, been circling through his back to the cage, like here. We see the Southpaws are traditionally back foot fighters. Yeah. So, good, good use of the frame here by Beck. He stamps it down, puts his weight in it, but Santinelli rips it off the mat. He's got 10 seconds left in this round to perhaps finish the takedown, punctuate the round. But Begley doing a good job of controlling the necktie and really using lateral movement to get himself off the fence. So, yeah. good finish to the end for Begley. Yeah, great finish for Begley. Still in this win. Competitive first round, but again, Nick just seemed to be that little little bit quicker to the punch, that little bit more switched on in the first. Uh, I, I actually, I'd have to look back, but I don't think Begley's fought in, in quite a while, whereas, whereas Santinelli's probably had his three fights to get him to two and one in the time that Begley's been away, so perhaps that first round was just that. You know, I don't know that ring rust is a thing, but... Well, that's, that, that, that's the quail, you suppose. If you've only had three amateur fights and then you've not fought for nine months, I would suggest the ring yeah, rust like is... starting again. Yeah. And it's different every time. Every yeah. weight cut's different. Every walk to the cage is different. Each opponent brings a different... Yeah. Uh, so 
what do you think they're what do you think the 12 gauge coaches are telling Begley now I think I think the one is to perhaps faint create a lead and and, and go from there you see the, the, there's, there's very little in between striking and that, that's what a type of striker like Santanelli who's enjoying it he's loose you want him to make mistakes by making him tense and if it is a 10-9 round it's one of those razor close 10-9 round right? you'd call it 10 nine and a half maybe if you could you know Hall just making sure the corner is cleared up from some excess waters we get steady to get ready sorry to start this second round this a nice touch of the glove to start us off there Stephen back to the action Begley again looking to perhaps take a step back and, and find the back foot and you can see yeah it, it, as you pointed out you start to watch that yeah, movement of yeah, he's, he's using his lead hand to feint rather than to land and he's creating um, he's making he's actually making Santinelli work Get a nice crisp pace to start the second round. Both fighter working. Both fighters yeah. working really hard. Lots of feints, nuances, and all that good stuff, and good variety as well from Santinelli. Look, looking to use his left hand to retain distance. And just dances out of the way of that kick. Obviously, Santinelli, a, a training partner of, uh, of Tim Barnett, who, who really adopts a very similar style in the fact that it's very difficult to get in distance. So he uses that front leg side kick, that oblique kick to control distance, especially against a southpaw where you can catch the lead hand and, and really dominate that proceedings. Oh, of course, Tim Barnett, you know, breaking breaking Irish hearts, becoming the Bama Lonsdale champion in the corner of so, Nicholas So we, we have now Santinelli in, in, in three-quarter mount, uh, or, or quarter guard, if you want to <laughs> if you want to reverse the position uh, there for Begley. But Begley turned his back away now, looking to perhaps expose his back, soften him up with strikes. He's re-pummeled, got an underhook on, on the opposite side. But yeah. Good strong wizard by Santinelli, perhaps keep him down. And again, these... Got to be careful not to get a quick warning not to land on hey, the back. He runs around the front to a front headlock position, yeah. then re regains back. And Some nice wrestling there. Yeah, but, but again, good good scrambling by Begley, looking to, to roll through, get rid of these hooks maybe. It's a little wrap and roll, but you see the, the half Nelson there that, that Santanelli worked. It just stopped Begley from getting his back to the mat and then obviously getting the underhook on the other side. And straight away attacking and the rear And now got both those hooks in as well. Yeah, but the cage actually helps Begley here. I seem to believe it a little bit active more, perhaps put the weight on, oh, on Santinelli's legs. He's got a nice short just. choke. You see, you really and he's oh, adopted and he to, the, it up. to the rear naked. I think it's on on the chin at the moment. Yeah, over the chin, but the, and there's over. the tap. Nice squeeze to finish. Good professional performance by Nick Santinelli. Really coming an age performance for me. I think on the feet, on the floor, looking very relaxed, composed, and, and really putting away a good, a good, solid opponent in, in Luke Begley. So hats off to Nick, and, and good and good gritty play by Luke there. Absolutely. And, and Nick, again, you know, a, a great performance, and looking none the worse for wear for this fight. If, if he is, if is going to continue to stay busy, again, you know, I look just further down the card a little earlier tonight when we had... Uh, Ruben Beresford as well. I mean, they're producing some monstrous yeah, yeah. welterweights, man. Well, yeah, I think MMA Academy are pretty much known now for the lightweight welterweight division. You've got some of the pros that are on later. Mark Glover obviously falls yep. into that. Lawrence Fitzpatrick, Tim Barnett. You've got Mark Kinsella. So, yeah, if you're a welterweight and you're based in the Northwest area, that's probably the gym for you. But on the flip side, they also have a lowerweight division with Aaron Aby, yep. Steve Nightingale, yep. you know, uh, Pietro Menga, Robbie Fallon. So it's a gym that's absolutely brimming with talent. So. And so, two minutes and six seconds into round number two, we have a winner via rear naked choke in the red corner, Nicholas. Santangeli! And your appreciation, please, for Luke Begley!